Fallbrook YA. We're so glad that you could join us tonight. It's Monday Night Live. We're coming to you live for a fellowship, discussion, and connection. So like and share and comment on this page. We want to hear from you. We've got some great young adults that are coming, bringing you a good word and discussion on various, several different topics. So we love to hear you and welcome to Monday Night Live. What does the Bible say about student loans? I don't think it speaks on student loans particular, but it does say let no debt remain outstanding except for the continual debt to love one another. Meaning, you know, if you borrow, definitely have intentions to pay back, um, but you don't hold it against your brothers and sisters. How has the current status of student loan debt affected you? That's a good question still paying on it. <laughs> um, I definitely know the first few years in undergraduate studies, I did go debt free. You know, I was able to use scholarships and grants and things like that working on campus. But then after the remaining, the remaining um, portion of what I own, I did take out loans. And it's, the part they don't tell you is that th that interest adds up. So even years later outside of school, you're still continually paying back that amount. So you talked about your scholarships and grants. Are there other resources that you found helpful in college and postgraduate studies to help pay for school? And what are some practical tips for people? Good question. I did. So once I got to grad school um, at Purdue, I realized there were other resources available, especially being um, an out-of-state student. Right, so they have on-campus jobs that you can use to help waiver that amount where you just have like a sit stipend you have to pay so you can get teacher's assistant positions, you can work on, on campus for work study, um, and then also you can pursue scholarships outside of the school that they don't tell you about. Do you believe student loans and debt prevent our students today from taking a more traditional route to furthering their education? I would say yes. Um, in this economy today, they teach you more so to borrow, um, you know, to have good credit. So it's already planted in your mind that you're going to take advantage of the system that's out there. But what they don't tell you later in life is that situations can happen that will put you kind of like in a bind where you might not be able to pay back the things that you did borrow. So instead of relying solely on credit, right, on how America is built on, look up some of the free resources that are available. So for example, um, I know when I got here, one of the mentees I linked up with, her mom created uh, a book called 101 Scholarship Applications, the 2019 Revised Edition, What It Takes to Obtain a Debt-Free College Education by Gwen Richardson. And in this book, she's listing like a plethora of scholarships that you can apply for outside of the school where it's for firstborns to go to college, is for even like right-handed, left-handed, just like kind of weird um, scholarships that are out there most people don't know about um, that the school doesn't necessarily bring in for students to apply for. So you can definitely look for outside scholarships by either smaller organizations or companies that are willing to commit. So when do you think that students should start looking for scholarships? Before school. <laughs> Definitely before school. Instead of waiting to, to take that road, you know, to get to college and say, okay, now I'm here, this is the amount, you know, that's needed. Start saving beforehand. I know my grandparents, they started a CD for me um, when I was a child. So that helped, but it ne didn't necessarily cover the full amount of tuition. Um, but it was a start. So if you know for sure that you're going to go to college, start preparing in, in advance. So if you're working, you know, summer jobs, start saving um, instead of like spending frivolously on different things. And then also kind of look into your field or your career and research that amount of typically what it will cost for that type of education. And then start storing up and saving for that. Okay. And the last question, um, sometimes people reconsider whether or not they want to pursue graduate degrees because they don't want to go into more debt or have to take on those extra jobs to gain more um, to gain the finances to pay for school in your experience was it worth that extra sacrifice to go back and get your other degree um, or 
could you have waited a little? What was your Good question. I, I would say it varies. Um, the thing I would tell anyone looking back now, make sure it's the path God wants you to take, right? So in this world, we deem success as certain titles or you see success as certain salary amounts. So people will say, if you, you know, get all these degrees, right? I got three degrees, two undergraduates, one post. And because of it, it's gonna automatically start me up at a higher base pay, which is true. However, debt does come with that. But when I did it through postgraduate studies the second time, I didn't have that much debt. Most of my debt comes from undergraduate, not graduate, because I learned from you know that situation. But then also, now looking back on it, you have to really ask God, is this your path or is this mine? So the path that I took was definitely a great resource um, into going into a career that I wanted. But where God has me now, it's a different road, a different path, but I'm still using those same resources and tools that I learned in school. But it's more so for his purpose and his glory now.